And there's more velociraptor action in the latest Dino Crisis incarnation. Plus, we run with the chickens and review the likes of Diablo 2. Stick around, it's game time! Welcome to GameSpot TV at Metreon. I'm Kate Patello. And I'm Adam Sessler. And we're here among many a great game. We have Marvel vs. Capcom 2 here, Rush 2049, all safely positioned within their respective genres. Which is pretty much the way an arcade works. You play one genre at a time. But at home, things are starting to change and genres are kind of blending together. Titles like Shenmue, Black and White, Seaman, they're all hard to categorize into one kind of spot. And now we have Giant Citizen Kabuto coming out. This is a neat blend of action, strategy, and a touch of role-playing to create a gaming booyah base. Yeah, and if you want to know how that uh, tastes, we went directly to the game's producer, Sean Jacoby, and we let him explain it to us. Giants is an action strategy game. Um, basically pits three races against one another. There's a, uh, the McCarrens, which are a technological kind of a soldier type group. There's the Sea Reapers, which are women that are into magic. And uh, then there's Kabuto, who's a 60 foot uh, giant creature that destroys everything in its path. <laughs> The story of giants is uh, the mechs uh, basically have a, 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 a ship that they're a mothership, and it uh, needs some repairing, so they stop in on this island. And I don't want to spoil the story, but basically, through playing all the single-player missions, you're going to learn the story of why Kabuto's there and why you need to defeat him, and so on through the end. There's different islands, and each island has kind of a surreal kind of look to it. There's uh, jungle settings, there's desert settings. So it's a fantasy world, um, but there's just a lot of vibrant colors, which is one of the neat things about Giants. It's not this dull kind of uh, dark world. It's very alive. There's five islands for each race, and, and the way you play the uh, uh, learn from the beginning is you start off playing the mechs, and it kind of is going to un unfold the story as you go from island to island. And each island has different missions on it. So uh, by the time you get through the mechs, say for for example, you're going to have played 15 levels or 15 different missions. So in total, when you play all three races, you're going to be about a total of about 45. Giants is an innovative game because it, it, it pits a, diff, a bunch of different strategies for each race. There's not just one set of things you can do. In other words, uh, the mechs are more of a technology type uh, race. They're going to rely on, on, on guns and things like that. The uh, Sea Reapers are more of your magic type. They're going to have to uh, collect mana. They're going to have to cast spells to defeat the other enemies. <laughs> Kabuto has to kind of figure out how to defeat the other two races without being killed by the other two. So he's going to use brute force, but he also has to manage his food because food is an important source. Food is power to him. So when he grabs food, it's like a Duracell battery. And the nice thing about the horns is he can stick these creatures onto his horns and walk around. So later on, when he's feeling a little bit down on uh, you know energy, he can grab a bimp off of it and eat it. He can he can actually grab the mechs out of the air, stuff them on the horns, and they're impaled for a while. So Kabuto is just this, this, this force. It, and, and the balance thing, the biggest thing about the game is, is trying to balance all the races. Um, being only one Kabuto, it's a lot easier to control. Being five mechs, it's like King Kong. They're flying all around, but they're not as powerful as Kabuto. So in other words, you kind of have to work together to figure out how to defeat them. The amount of time needed to finish Giants would probably be a good 36 hours of gameplay. There's trial and error type stuff. For me, I could probably finish it in about 20 hours, but I mean, the, the normal gamer, there's a lot of this, I gotta try that, I've gotta try this. And then, once again, once you finish with a single player, you can move on to the multiplayer. And the nice thing about that is once you finish the single player mode, you basically are ready to jump into multiplayer mode and just take over. I know what weapon does what, I know how to build a base. So it's, it's also a teaching tool to learn how to play multiplayer. We're about, uh, I would say, 80% complete on the on the multiplayer stuff, and then, like I said, we have a few more uh, levels of the of the single player, and, and basically that's where we really want to tell the story. So we're trying to make that as alive and and, and vibrant as as we can. 
You know what? I am going to call him next time I need an exterminator. Good idea. All right. You can look for Giant Citizen Kabuto to hit store shelves sometime in the fall. And now, game news. Gambit Studios has developed an emulator for the Palm Pilot series. The emulator, called Liberty, will run almost any monochrome Game Boy title. Users can remap the buttons at the bottom of their pilots to suit the games, which can be uploaded to the pilot via the Hot Sync Cradle. Gambit Studios is distributing a freeware version of the emulator on its website, and a full version can be downloaded for $16.95. After months of mediocre sales in Japan, Sega has at last scored a deserved success in its homeland. The relaunch of the company's online ordering system, D-Direct, has generated a Dreamcast buying frenzy. Sales reports indicate that day one sales hit a massive 352 million yen, which is equal to 3.25 million U.S. dollars. If you'd like to see our giant feature again, then come to the GameSpot TV website where you can check it out in streaming video. We also have our full in-depth interview with Giant's producer, Sean Jacoby. Coming up on GameSpot TV, we step into the dark realms in our review of Diablo 2. And we review the follow-up to the sleeper hit, Brave Fencer Musashi, with the latest Square release, Threads of Fate. You're watching GameSpot TV. What do you think about Campaign 2000? Let your voice be heard. Send a V-mail today to ZDTV.com slash netcamp. Welcome to the network where we're talking with Kevin the Magician. How you doing, honey? Great. So do you have an online community of magicians? We have all kinds of magicians out on the internet. In fact, I have a link right on my front page there, and you can go to other people's sites who perform magic online. Well, I guess we all have some tricks up our sleeves, don't we? Would you like to see one? Absolutely. This is a close-up piece of magic that involves my black silk here, and I'm just going to put it into the palm of my hand like this. And watch. It's an egg. But now I'm going to tell you the secret. It's a hole in a plastic egg. But I'll do it again. I'll put the silk down into the hole in the egg like this. Don't show them the hole. In fact, make us see that it's a real egg. Like <laughs> Bravo! Bravissimo! Thank you. <laughs> Want to talk? Find out how at ZDTV.com slash tilde. Meet the guests of Silicon Spin. That's an outright Microsoft lie. Debating the hot topics in high tech. I don't like the idea of my computer watching me. I believe we should get pornography into the hands of children just as early as we possibly can. You're sick. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Do you actually think of what for you speak? It's another fine point you're making. Thank you. It would be considered politically incorrect. I had this problem before. I don't know who to attack. Silicon Spin, weeknights at 11.30, 10.30 Central, only on ZDTV. Make e-commerce your business. ZDTV presents Working the Web, the complete guide to setting up shop online. Gary Bowles brings you the experts, trends, and tools you need to get your company in the black. Watch Working the Web, the only show for e-commerce professionals. Thursday at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific on ZDTV. Working the Web is brought to you by UPS. Welcome back to GameSpot TV at Metreon. Now, if you've been a diligent viewer the past few weeks, you probably noticed we've been speaking quite a bit about Diablo 2. You think? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I think we've said pretty much all we can say. Yeah. So here's our review. After more than three years in the making, Diablo 2 has finally arrived. Is it worth the wait? Well, for devotees of the original, the answer is yes. Diablo 2's world is significantly bigger than that of its predecessor. Divided into four distinct acts, each with its own setting, Diablo 2 permits outdoor exploration in addition to the standard dungeon crawls. Gameplay still consists mainly of killing monsters, gaining treasure and experience points. Your character improves abilities and weaponry as you go, which drives you to keep going. Diablo 2's character development system has been overhauled. Almost all skills are unique to a particular class. 
You get to select which skills your character acquires or improves, so even characters of the same class can be customized, which is really good for replay value. Now, the graphics in Diablo 2 are disappointing. Diablo's 1996 SVGA graphics were top of the line. More than three years later, however, SVGA just doesn't pack quite the same punch. There are some improvements, most noticeably the game's lighting and translucency effects. In Diablo 2, the single and multiplayer modes are almost identical. Multiplayer Diablo didn't permit you to save whenever you wanted. If you died, you'd have to trek, unarmed, back to your corpse. Blizzard North apparently believed the resulting tension was worth keeping because that's the only way to save your game in the sequel. Saving costs you. When a game is saved, all the monsters are respawned. Now, there are waypoints to activate so you can get close to where your character was last exploring, but since the creatures will have repopulated, it can be a long and dangerous walk. It's a design decision that's bound to frustrate some players and makes the game much harder to complete. Diablo 2 offers a large gaming world and a complex character development system. While its graphics appear somewhat dated, Diablo 2 has incredible replay value. Most importantly, it offers a lot of addictive gameplay in either the single or the multiplayer mode. GameSpot.com gives Diablo 2 an 8.5 out of 10. Diablo 2 is a great game, but I still personally have a beef with the save option. When you save, you are penalized. All of the monsters on your level are respawned, which means you don't have that satisfaction of having a level stay cleared after you've cleared it, and it makes the game really hard to complete, which helps explain why a level 80 barbarian just sold on eBay for $800. All right, next up, an excellent RPG from Square, Threads of Fate. After a two-year wait, the spiritual successor to Brave Fencer Musashi, Threads of Fate, is finally out. It proves to be a unique RPG that's both weird and wonderful and maintains the same offbeat innovations that made Musashi a sleeper hit. The story is revealed through two adventurers, Rue, an enigmatic youth, and Mint, a snotty, power-hungry princess. Though each of their journeys are heavily intertwined, each character has their own unique adventure. The gameplay depends on the character you choose. Rue is mostly a physical fighter, but can also take the form and traits of any enemy he has defeated. Mint, on the other hand, comes from the school of drop kicks and ring slaps. She charges through levels like a gymnast with a vengeance. The characters really make the game endearing. Rue is quiet and full of surprises, and you'll root for Mint despite the fact that she can be mean and a greedy little brat. The supporting characters are also memorable. There's enough visual flair to make up for the lack of FMVs and pre-rendered backgrounds. The models are well textured and the colors are vibrant. The music is upbeat and the sound effects harken to classic Saturday morning cartoons. Surprisingly, despite the two stories, Threads of Fate suffers from being too short. The game is charming enough, however, to make it a worthy addition to any RPG library. GameSpot.com gives Threads of Fate an 8.2 out of 10. Coming up on GameSpot TV, the chickens are scrambling to avoid a fate even worse than death. Yep, chicken pot pie. We have a review of the exceedingly cute Chicken Run Fun Pack. The Money Machines Investment Challenge just got bigger. That's right, and we're giving you half a million dollars. Just register at ZDTV.com slash Money Machine. Start your portfolio with 500000 in virtual money, then invest it all online. We've got the tips, tools, and research you'll need to win some great prizes by staying ahead of the competition. The Money Machines All-New Investment Challenge. Register now and show the guys on Wall Street how it's really done. What's new at ZDTV.com? It's our all-new Super Guides, 10 essential guides to everything on the web that's useful, practical, even musical. Like the Super Guide to Linux, giving you the coolest tips and tricks with this maverick operating system. Or the Super Guide to Digital Photography, with the best buys and how-tos for developing your photos online. Then the MP3 Super Guide rocks the net with the latest downloads and greatest gadgets for digital audio. Check out all our Super Guides at ZDTV.com now. People all around the world are using computers and the Internet. All you guys on the Internet, on Information Highway, 
log on. Log on and roll over, baby, and don't log off. Because every day is going to be something provocatively beautiful, something more exciting than yesterday. Why was the Internet created? It was the highway of information. Information must be disseminated. Information is knowledge, and knowledge is key. Welcome back to GameSpot TV at Metreon. Now, the movie Chicken Run, which I really dug, by the way, has a game coming out attached to it. It's coming from IDOS, and it'll be released later on in the fall. But in the meantime, Activision has put out a little Chicken Run fun pack, which is, of course, not something we'd really recommend for hardcore gamers. Or chickens. No fingers. They don't plot. They don't scheme. And they are not organized. <laughs> Can't get enough of Chicken Run? Well, we've got a title that should tide you over till IDOS's adventure version comes out. Activision brings us a collection of everything from mini games to screensavers, all based on Nick Park's blockbuster film. Have a few minutes of gaming time to spare? Try Spring Chicken, in which you help chickens escape from certain piedom by bouncing them off a rolling mini trampoline and right over Farmer Tweety's fence. If the mini tramp method doesn't do it for you, try taking a more direct route, sort of. Run Chicken Run is a maze game in which you lay down pieces of timber or metal to guide your chickens on their escape route. Choose the wrong guide piece or let it lay in place too long and your chicken falls down the hole, ostensibly right into a pie. Don't let that be a lesson to the lot of you. No chicken escapes from Tweedy's farm. If you'd like to go the whole bird, use the chickenizer to create your own custom desktop theme or peek at clips and stills from the film. If you need a break from dank dungeons and slobbering monsters, you might want to spend a little time with the Chicken Run Fun Pack instead. You know, for 20 bucks, you really can't go wrong with the Chicken Run Fun Pack. It's very cute, and I liked it a lot. Now, we've shown you classic video game collections from Atari and also from television. Now here's one from Midway. Midway's greatest arcade hits, Volume 1, has some real classics. First and foremost is Defender. All in place with its thrust and reverse controls that did wonders to confuse me as an 8-year-old. But you can bypass them by using the directional pad. The sequel, originally called Stargate, is also included, but it's now renamed Defender 2. It's more or less the original, but it has more added in. A real winner on the disc is Robotron 2084, where you run around blasting the evil enemy Robotrons. The game used two arcade sticks, one to move and one to control your direction of fire. The four front buttons controlling fire in the Dreamcast version work ideally. I was very excited to see that Joust was included in the game, as they played it a lot in the arcade. Then I remembered that I wasn't very good at it. Unfortunately, it also seems a little harder, as the A button is a little harder to keep pounding than the large flat button in the arcade version. Sinistar is also very well suited to the Dreamcast controller, as you collect the goodies to fight the title beast and deal with the pesky enemies getting in your way. Rounding out the package is a game called Bubbles, something I never saw at my Chuck E. Cheese. You control a bubble that washes up debris to make you bigger, all the while avoiding various bathroom nasties like brushes and spiders attempting to foil your hygienic plans. The games are emulated and sometimes it doesn't completely work. The difference in resolution between the arcade machines and your television makes everything look a little blurry. In addition, there aren't any extras that have appeared in other classic collections. In the end, if you want a collection of classic games and don't have Midways in one of its many other versions, this is a fine way to go. GameSpot gives it a 5.5 out of 10. I usually don't feel this way, but I really did miss having those extras on the Midway disc. The Atari Arcade Classics and the Intellivision discs had old promotional materials and old commercials to really make it feel more fun and more complete. The Dino Crisis was a very popular game from last year. It was made by the same people that gave us Resident Evil, but this time they gave their genre a more reptilian twist. And now, they're making us a sequel, Dino Crisis 2. A new dinosaur threat has once again called for the services of Dino Crisis veteran Regina. The ante's been upped on both sides, so be ready for one fierce Jurassic bloodbath. 
Unlike the first Dino Crisis, there are no tedious chores like scrounging for ammo or powering generators. Dino Crisis 2 will have a faster pace with running as the default. You'll spend most of your time outdoors, making it much harder to escape from packs of velociraptors. But hey, you're a member of the elite forces, so battling dinos should be no sweat. You'll take comfort in the fact that you can fire shotguns and pistols while running at full speed. And another new feature lets you execute a second attack with a subweapon, which can be a taser or a machete. Here, I'll show you. Very helpful for close combat. <coughs> With new gameplay comes new conventions. A point system tallies your kills, which can be used to purchase various recover and defensive items throughout the game. Dino Crisis 2 is primed to bring not only the series, but the whole survival horror genre to the next level with faster, more action-oriented gameplay. Look for Dino Crisis 2 to hit stores sometime in the fall. Coming up on GameSpot TV, we review the Happy Mutant movie tie-in title, X-Men Mutant Academy. And now a message from the manager of the ZDTV Netcam Network. Here at ZDTV, we receive tons of emails, and every week we pick one you just gotta see. We call it the Net Camera of the Week. Worked up by the Napster Metallica debate, Patrick used the network to voice his opinion in A Message to Lars. What's on your mind? Let us know at our website. You can be our next Net Camera of the Week. Just go to ZDTV.com slash netcam and send us your email today. Some places are strange. Just that smell. Clean, fresh air. Oh, what? Oh, damn! Some people are different. I'm gonna give some breakfast to my dead homies. I miss you, man! And some problems... Better open up that window. I got an idea. ...are chronic. Ice Cube. What's my call, 69? No, 68. Oh, damn! Next Friday. Playing this month on Direct Ticket Pay-Per-View on Direct TV. Love Fridays. They were the greatest team the world had never seen. But all that's about to change. I come bearing the New York Rangers. Play against our boys. The town sheriff, the grocer, and a high school kid are playing the Rangers? This is a joke. Wait till we beat them, and we'll see who's a joke. From producer David E. Kelly and Jay Roach, the director of Austin Powers. Do not give these guys too much respect. Anybody here tired? No! We're in this game! History in Alaska. This month on Direct Ticket Pay-Per-View on Direct TV. Well, the X-Men is one of the biggest movies of the summer, so of course it has to have a game tie-in to go along with it. Now, what is surprising, though, is who made the game. It's Paradox, a company that gave us the offbeat fighter Wu-Tang Shaolin style and the very controversial and never-released Thrill Kill. So let's take a look at X-Men Mutant Academy. I've never seen anything like this before. We are the future, Charles, not them. With the hype surrounding the release of the X-Men movie, it comes as no surprise that the mass-marketed tie-ins have reached the console gaming world. X-Men Mutant Academy is an example of this. Its release proves that it takes more than a cast of renowned characters and cookie-cutter attacks to make a fighting game worthy of attention. Had enough? Mutant Academy takes its cues from the Street Fighter textbook. You use six buttons, three punches, three kicks, and they have traditional attacks such as grabs and dragon punches. Attempts at innovation come with a super move system. Three different supers are charged up with three different meters, allowing for a variety of attacks depending on how you manage your meters. In the spirit of movie tie-ins, the movie trailer, stills, and FMVs are unlockable and the sketchy AI will grant you these rewards quicker than you'll expect. The character models are solid, though the same can't be said for the animation, which looks stiff. 
the sound is unbearably plain. You have your standard smack, slap, and explosion noises. And the wind quotes are as lame as they come. The dream will never die. The super move system is unique but doesn't save the game. Mutant Academy clings too close to the generic fighting formula, resulting in a very low replay value. GameSpot.com gives X-Men Mutant Academy a 6.4 out of 10. It's unfortunate that outside of their various appearances in Capcom Fighters, the X-Men just haven't received a very good video game treatment. Now this next game is a different matter altogether. It's an RPG from Square called Chrono Cross, the sequel to Chrono Trigger. To help get you excited about it, here's the intro. You know, Grind Session is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't have to try so hard to be cool. Here's some help. Just in case you've gotten tired of the same old grind, here are a couple of cheats to spice up your boarding. To acquire all tricks, pause the game, and then press down, left, up, right, down, left, up, right. To unlock level 8, go to the big gray ramp with a blue streak on the bottom that's in front of a wall. Go off the ramp and do an air trick. If you hit the wall in the middle of the trick, you will land it perfectly and get full points. And if you get all keys, photos, and coins in both wings of the dream house, you'll unlock Master AO, the ultimate skater. And now, here's a Diablo 2 strategy tip, this time for one of our viewers, Katzman. Thank you, Katzman. When it's time to kill Andario at the end of Act 1, she's really tough. So, keep a full belt of health potions first. Second, cast a town portal just outside the stairs by her entrance. Then, go in, take a few pot shots, turn around, run away, heal yourself, go back, take more pot shots, and eventually you should be able to wear her down. Yes, she's not going to be regaining any health as you're going back and forth from the town. Now, if you have any more strategies or tips for Diablo 2, submit them to our Diablo 2 strategy guide on our website. Or if you just want to talk about them with us live, you can do that on Tuesday nights in our chat at 8 p.m. Eastern. So until next time, game, game over. over. Game over. Yeah, game, game over. over. Game, it's a game way over. Don't, don't worry. <laughs>